Well, good morning. This is a, a sunrise from Key West as we are uh, exiting out the, the harbor, the channel, I guess. And um, beautiful morning. Some clouds around. There's been some rain in the distance, but um, I hope that's just going to all go away the other way. So where are we going today? Well, the idea is we are going to Fort Jefferson, Dry Tortugas. It's about a 10 hour drive, 10, 11. And if we do have an alternative plan is if it's too rough out there, which I don't think it will be, we'll hit Marquesas Keys which is about 25 miles from here. So that's only five hours. We'll see, we've been at the, uh, we've been at the Mooring Ball for what, two weeks? We've had our first COVID shot. We got to get our second COVID shot in about three weeks. So we're taking the opportunity to go see Fort Jefferson. The only way you can get there is on a fast ferry by a seaplane or on your own boat. So, what are we doing? We're taking our own boat. We got a boat. <laughs> we got a boat, so we're going. Well, we've been out here since about seven o'clock this morning. It's now noon. Um, winds are about 20 to 22. Seas are diminishing they were four to six you can hardly see on the camera we have another five or six or seven hours to go we're doing about six knots both sails up and working well and motors are off and they have been off for quite a while well here we are 70 miles later coming in the Dry Tortugas Fort Jefferson. Um, all those anch boats are anchored in there. We're hoping when we get around the point that there's still room for us. Um, so pretty excited to, to make landfall. Been a beautiful sail. Fort Jefferson on the Dry Tortugas. It took us about 11 hours to get here. At anchor at Fort Jefferson, Dry Tortugas, we got a nice little spot right here in five feet of water. It's good to have a catamaran that doesn't draw too much. We draw just under three feet. And we got a pretty good soft, sandy area. And we're going to recuperate from our journey and go in tomorrow. We have to register the boat, register us, and walk around the fort maybe. Maybe go swimming instead. I don't know. Sunrise and dry tortugas. the dinghy at the dinghy beach now we have to go ch register and uh, have make our payment there's puddles and out there is barefoot over here I think there's a self-serve pay station and they also have primitive camping here it's all primitive as can be. No lights, no phone, no motor cars, not a single luxury. Not quite like Robinson Crusoe. For you Gilligan Island fan people. They bring them in by plane and by boat for a day visit.
Construction of the fort began in 1846 and went on for 30 years, but was never finished. It served as a fort and as a prison. Want to know what 16 million bricks look like? Doesn't seem like enough, does it? Inside Fort Jefferson. The place is massive. You can see the arched tracks on the floor where cannons were mounted and they could swivel them around for whatever target they were shooting at. Although there was never a shot fired out of aggression from here and then fort was never fired upon. The cannons were pointed out these windows and the range of the cannons were about three miles. They heated the cannonballs so that uh, crews could fire red hot projectiles at wooden warships to set them ablaze. The moat was used to buffer the fort from the effects of the waves coming across the ocean. The moat never did house any monsters or alligators, but one of the construction workers did manage to catch a 10-foot shark and put it in the moat. Don't know how long it lasted, but, uh, or how he got it in there. During the time the fort served as a prison, it housed Dr. Mudd. Mudd worked as a doctor and tobacco farmer in Southern Maryland. The Civil War seriously damaged his business, especially when Maryland abolished slavery in 1864. That year he met Booth, who was planning to kidnap President Lincoln, and Mudd was seen in the company of three conspirators. However, his part in the plot, if any, remained unclear. Booth shot Lincoln on April 14, 1865, but was injured in his escape from the scene. He rode with conspirator David Harold to Mudd's house in the early hours of April 15 for surgery on a fractured leg. Mudd was sentenced to a life in prison for his part in the conspiracy. Dr. Mudd actually got a pardon from Andrew Jackson in 1809 for helping with yellow fever outbreak and saved many lives here at the fort. Every night around sunset, these birds on this island just come alive. Because they come here to uh, nest. There's all kinds of birds. I can't tell you what they all are, but there are a lot of them. pelicans, terns. Snorkeling along the outside wall of the moat is pretty good. It's shallow and there's lots of life. taking the dinghy over to this loggerhead key. I don't know if you can see the lighthouse on shore. Might be a little too wide angle. But we're gonna go over here, walk the beach, do some snorkeling, 
and uh, I don't know what else. Here we are at Loggerhead Key, mostly known for the lighthouse that was originally on Garden Key, the site of Fort Jefferson. Not too many people around. Oh, there's one. Well, this sign says to the beach in Little Africa. Don't know what this plaque is. Seaman Apprentice William Graves. November 55 to June of 75. Oh. He lost his life completing the construction of the pier. So this was the lighthouse keeper's house when it was manned. This must be all automated. It's not if it works at all. It doesn't. It's not functional. Okay, so I've been corrected. It doesn't work. But it's a good daily visual. Constructed in 1845, it was used by the Union Army, never relinquished control to the Confederate Army, and this has the largest collection of Civil War armament in the world. This is a blacksmith shop. Construction of the fort began in 1845, shortly after Florida became a state. In 1850, the fortress was named after the U.S. President Zachary Taylor, who died in office earlier in the year. Throughout the 1850s, construction of the 
fort was slow. Yellow fever, shortage of material and men, remoteness and hurricanes had slowed down the progress. Prior to the start of the Civil War, the fortress was manned by Captain John Brannan, placing the, in, placing the fort in Union hands. The main role of the fort during the Civil War was to serve as headquarters for the U.S. Navy's East Coast Blockade. This squadron deterred numerous uh, supply ships from reaching the Confederate ports in the Gulf of Mexico. For this video, hit the subscribe and the bell button and be notified when we release another video.